What is dietary protein? Dietary protein is protein from the foods you eat. All animals, fish, eggs, and dairy products are technically classified as protein, but dietary protein exists in many foods. There are two basic sources of dietary protein, plants and animals. Plant protein exists in these types of foods. Legumes, whole grains, vegetables, nuts and seeds, and fruits. Animal protein exists in these types of foods. Dairy, chicken, beef, fish, and bacon and eggs. Dietary protein is comprised of amino acids. Amino acids are often referred to as the building blocks of protein. Basic elements of amino acids are hydrogen, oxygen, carbon, and nitrogen. Your body takes amino acids from the foods you eat and uses them to build different proteins your body needs. Each protein has a unique sequence of amino acids that determines the protein structure and function. Proteins are the basis of your muscles, skin, and hair. There are 20 amino acids required for proper human cellular function. 10 of those amino acids are produced by your body, so they're called non-essential. The other 10 amino acids are not produced by your body, so they're referred to as essential amino acids. Amino acids that are essential must come from the foods you eat. So it's a matter of non-essential versus essential. So first we'll look at the non-essential amino acids, which are the 10 amino acids produced by your body. These include alanine, asparagine, aspartic acid, cysteine or cysteine, glutamic acid, glutamine, glycine, proline, serine, and tyrosine. The essential amino acids, the 10 amino acids not produced by your body, so they're essential that you must get them from food, are histidine, isoleucine, leucine, lysine, methionine, phenylalanine, threonine, tryptophan, valine, and arginine. The last one there, arginine, is essential only for young children. So you'll often see the number nine in terms of essential amino acids. So arginine, but also over in the non-essential amino acids, there are two, cysteine or cysteine and tyrosine that are considered essential for young children as well. So there are basically three in total here that are essential for young children. And the reason is that the metabolic pathways in their body that create these are not yet formed in very young children. So it's essential that they get them. What are recommended amounts of dietary protein? In terms of males and females, dietary protein grams per day. This is from the Institute of Medicine. It starts out relatively the same for males and females. And then when we get to 14 to 18 years, the requirement becomes higher for males. And of course, it's also higher for lactating women and pregnant women. What are recommended amounts of essential amino acids? So here we see the essential amino acids. In terms of milligrams per gram of protein, what is the recommended amount? In case you have to remember essential amino acids for some reason, here's a handy anacronym, HILT, LT, MVP, that can be helpful in remembering them. There are two here that are measured a bit differently, and those are methionine and phenylalanine. The measurement in terms of the recommended amounts of them, methionine includes cysteine or cysteine because they're both sulfur-containing amino acids. The body can make one from the other and vice versa, so those two are measured together. Phenylalanine is measured with tyrosine because they are both considered aromatic amino acids. 
phenylalanine breaks down into tyrosine. So those two are also measured together. So we see here the numbers in terms of the milligrams per gram of protein, the recommended amounts. And why is this interesting or important is because these numbers foods that contain all nine of these essential amino acids in at least the amounts that you see here are how complete protein is defined. So complete protein contains all of these essential amino acids in the correct amount. So what is a complete protein? We'll look at complete protein, incomplete protein, and complementary protein. So protein is a chain of amino acids, and all foods contain amino acids. As a reminder, nine of them are essential. Proteins are classified as complete or incomplete by the type and amount of amino acid they contain. A complete protein contains all nine essential amino acids, inadequate amounts per serving. And this is an important technicality here that we will talk about. So beef is considered a complete protein. It contains all nine essential amino acids in adequate amounts per serving. An incomplete protein contains some of the nine essential amino acids. So it has some of them, but not all of them. Or it contains all of the nine essential amino acids, but in inadequate amounts per serving to qualify as complete. So it contains all nine, but it just doesn't have enough of them per serving to qualify as complete. So cauliflower is classified as an incomplete protein. It is the second point there. It does contain all of the nine essential amino acids, but it just doesn't have enough of them per serving to qualify as complete. But if you ate enough of the cauliflower, it would be a complete protein. Complementary proteins are incomplete proteins, which would contain some of the nine essential amino acids, plus another incomplete protein, which would contain the remainder of them or even the amount of the ones that were missing to form a complete protein that contained all nine essential amino acids in adequate amounts per serving. An example of that is a combination of rice and beans. Those two are considered complementary proteins that together form a complete protein. Do other vegetables have all of the essential amino acids? The answer is yes. And we're looking here, for example, at a large potato. So we see the essential amino acid listed, the adult requirement in terms of milligrams per day, what one large potato contains, and what six large potatoes contain. And as you can see, the six large potatoes do deliver in terms of the requirements. Not that you necessarily want to eat six potatoes, but the point is that other vegetables do have all of the essential amino acids. Many vegetables have all of the essential amino acids, and that's just such a pretty picture of lima beans. Had to include that. In fact, some of the largest animals on the planet consume only plant protein. So it's no surprise that it is, in fact, a complete protein. How much protein is in some fruits and veggies? We see here listed some fruits, a half a cup. Perhaps take a look for one of your favorites and see what's going on there. The point is that fruit does have protein. Vegetables also contain protein a little bit more than fruit for the most part. How much protein is in some legumes, nuts, and seeds? Legumes, as you can see here, are a very good source of protein. And similarly, nuts and seeds are as well. So a question for you which has more percent protein per 100 grams? So if you had 100 grams of broccoli and 100 grams of steak, which of them has more protein? 
And the answer is steak. But it's interesting how people can shift information around depending on your point of reference. So here we ask the question, which has more grams of protein per 100 calories? So if you had 100 calories worth of broccoli and 100 calories worth of steak, which one of them has more grams of protein? And the answer here is broccoli. What is true about amino acids? Amino acids are the building blocks of dietary protein. Amino acids are in every food item from fruits to meat. Your body creates some amino acids and others you must get from food. Proteins are classified as complete or incomplete based on their amino acid content. All of the above or none of the above. And as usual, you are correct, all of the above. And a final question, which of the following things contain protein? Lettuce, cheese, avocado, turkey, whole grain bread, all of the above. Correct again, all of the above. <laughs>